So the project is finished, the gallery show is over, and now what? Well, we need to let the project dry so we can get it glazed and fired in the kiln. Preferably, it's nice if you can have the students lay their project as they finish in the same spot it will be when it's time to glaze. That gives less opportunity for breakage. You need to let the projects dry in a place for seven to ten days. You need it to be bone dry. That means all the moisture has evaporated out of it. Now I dry my pieces in where my kilns are, so it only takes two to three days for my projects to dry. But if you're trying to rush your projects, don't put a space heater in because that's not going to work. The best way to kind of rush your projects dries with a big box fan. Turn it on low, not directly on the projects because that will dry them unevenly, but just get the wind or the breeze blowing in the room where your projects are and that will completely dry your projects out probably in about three to four days. Now let's say that after they've been resting and drying, you have some breakage. Well, let's talk about that. If your project breaks while it's still wet, all you have to do is kind of push it back together because clay paint is watery clay, just like clay glue. But let's say it's dried for a day or two and it's what's called leather hard. That means it's still cool to the touch and still has a little water content in it. The best way to put the pieces together at that point is with a toothbrush and vinegar. Now vinegar, not water, dip the toothbrush in vinegar, scratch it on the piece that needs to be attached, put them together, and most of the time that'll hold. Let's say that your piece is already bone dry and you've had breakage. You're not going to be able to attach it at this point. It's better to glaze the two pieces separately and then after they fired in the kiln, put them together. So I found the best adhesive to glue two pieces together and that would be E6000. You can get this at any craft store. E6000 will hold it forever, but it takes a long time for it to dry. So what I do is I put a little drop of hot glue next to a drop of E6000. The hot glue will help hold the pieces quickly until the E6000 has a chance to dry. And this will hold the pieces together. Now if you can't sit there and hold them until they actually adhere to each other, just a piece of tape over the pieces will help hold them in place until the adhesive has a chance to work. So let's say that all your pieces have dried seven to ten days. They're ready to be glazed. Now it's time to glaze them. All my projects can be glazed a little bit different. Some projects need to be submerged all the way into my dipping glaze and then you wipe off the bottom. Luckily with our mask project, we don't have to do that. Now let's talk about the glaze. The glaze will be sitting in your bucket. It usually settles to where the powder content of the glaze is in the bottom of the bucket and it's a little watery or watery glaze at the top. So you'll need to stir your glaze. Just a good stick works really well. If your glaze has been stored for a long period of time, you may need to get what I call a mixer. And it's really just a paint mixer that you put on the end of a drill and you can use that and that'll mix it up as well. So you want to stir the glaze until it's the same consistency all the way from the bottom to the top. And now it's time to dip the project. Don't be scared of the project. If you followed the clay lady rules to make it thick as an Oreo cookie and put together with clay glue, your project is going to be durable. You don't have to do that traditional bisque firing to make it hard as a biscuit to glaze. We can glaze it what's called green or just glaze it where it's bone dry. In fact, what I would suggest, if you decide to teach clay the clay lady way, take a project Make it thick as an Oreo cookie, put it together with clay glue, and then handle it. See if you can break it. See where that point is. I think you'll be surprised how durable it is. So here we go. We're getting ready to dip the mask. Now all my projects are usually dipped a little bit different. There's some like the flower pot that needs to be completely submerged into the glaze and then you wipe off the bottom. Plates completely in the glaze. But there's a lot of flat projects such as this mask that you don't have to submerge all the way into the glaze. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my project with just my fingertips. I've just stirred the glaze and then I'm going to lay the mask and kind of roll it at the top of the glaze. Now as the glaze coats the mask you'll be able to see some of the color but as the glaze dries it'll be completely white. Glaze is made out of powdered glass basically and water. The water is going to soak into the clay leaving this crust on the outside. When you put your mask into the kiln this crust will turn molten, turn to a clear glaze and all that color will show right through. After your glaze has had an opportunity to dry, you'll need to wipe the glaze off the bottom of the project. If you've completely submerged the project, you need to completely wipe off the bottom. Otherwise, the glaze will turn molten and fuse to your kiln shelf. On my mask, because of the way I was able to just dip it on the top part of the glaze, I have very little glaze that I need to wipe off. I always have a bucket full of water. 
with a sponge and I just take the sponge and look how easily that wipes off. I just wipe off the back where the project's going to touch the shelf and now it's ready to load into the kiln. Thank you.